Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to our webinar, which is going to be dedicated to a very important subject at the moment. Will hygiene help to get our guests back? Um, I'm Benedict, founder of Certain Logic, a consultancy company that supports the hospitality and technology companies. So, first of all, I would like uh, everybody to introduce themselves. So, maybe starting with the ladies, Nina, would you like to go ahead? Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nina Fairweather. I, have, uh, I used to work with Starwood Hotels for many years as a uh, health, safety, security director for Europe, Africa, Middle East. I have lots of experience of pandemics and situations like this. Um, I've now got my own consultancy. I'm based in Dundee. Hello, my name is Victoria Wagner. I'm leading the training and tech service division of eClub Europe. Uh, and eClub, if you have never heard about it, it's a hygiene partner for many B2B customers, providing cleaning products and know-how to our customers. And we have a really great service model to serve our customers. And uh, just recently I had the chance to uh, conduct many, many webinars for more than 5,000 customers. Happy to be here. Alex, would you like to go ahead? Hi, my name is Alex Blom. I'm um, the owner of a company called Hos Intra. We are a Dutch company, technology company, and specialized in workflow management for hotels. My name is uh, Abdel Bruin. I'm the director of Hotel Sassheim from the family owned uh, Van der Valk hotel chain. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So a few details before we start. If anybody would like to post questions, please feel free. We will make our really best to, uh, to address them uh, by anyone in the panel. And uh, really, the reason we um, organized this uh, webinar is really to get the feedback from um, actually your owner and the general manager of the hotel for him really to share his experience of how he has reopened his hotel and how his business doing so Abba, would you like to share your experience please yes of course that is not a nice experience but it all it all ends well uh, on 16 of march uh, we started the, the lockdown started and uh, the first phase uh, was really uh, about uh, fear and safety. Uh, so we had to create a uh, safe environment and working space. That was uh, the main thing. So we inform our employees and prepare them. And the thing is that if, they, if the longer they stay at home, the more difficult it will be to get them back and, uh, and feel safe. But the, at first, uh, the first uh, thing was so we locked down for two weeks and um, uh, safety first. So uh, we closed in total, we closed our hotel for four weeks. And um, then it became clearer in terms of regulation and safety standards. So we called all our employees to come to work. And uh, we did all the preventive maintenance on the building and all the small tasks and cleaning up storages and so on and so on. So we did all the, we were working with, together without guests. So it was, uh, it was uh, very nice. Uh, phase two, uh, you have to use your time very smart. So reorganize your hotel, um, your work uh, on your protocols, checklists, uh, and work on a new shed strategy because the, the whole uh, hospitality market has changed. Uh, for us, we had to focus on leisure because there were more, no more business meetings and conferences, only local meetings and day trainings. That, that's, that's the only thing was left. Um, and we are an international hotel uh, near to Schiphol. So we had a lot of international meetings. So that, that was all gone till the end of the year. So um, we have to focus more on, leisure, on the leisure market. Uh, what is very important is uh, that you communicate with your employees and prepare them when they're coming back with the guests. Uh, use social media in, uh, in, to inform your guests what you are doing. Prepare for a reopening. Uh, show them how you, you clean everything and paint, place new plans, and set up new arrangements. Uh, do not use progressive uh, sales uh, because that will not be appreciated by the guests. 
various hotel chains in the Netherlands have been uh, brought down on social media and received a lot of criticism uh, of the, for their uh, advertising camp uh, campaigns. Um, together with the management, we came up with a new strategy per outlet and for the hotel. Uh, the business market is uh, down. Uh, we have uh, many international meetings and that will be canceled. And um, uh, we expect that all the, 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 the business bookings will be back at the first quarter, second quarter of 2021. As long as there are no uh, second uh, corona wave. Uh, so we have to focus on leisure, uh, the tourist in your own country. That's the thing. Uh, everyone goes on vacation in their own country. They don't leave, uh, they don't go over the borders because uh, it's all difficult uh, with uh, all the rules over there. And so, uh, so make sure you have uh, newsletters ready, um, uh, including uh, including your business guests because all, they also go uh, on uh, vacation in their own country uh, you, and use your uh, environment around you, your uh, unique selling points around your hotel. Uh, at the first time you have to focus on young people because they are not afraid uh, to go out and to go on vacation. Um, and then uh, and then the elderly will come later. Um, and find out where the bookings are coming from. Uh, which region, which age, uh, the age of the category, and target them uh, through social media, uh, Facebook or Instagram. Uh, so we had a lot of uh, customers coming from Germany, from North Westfalen, it's around two hour drive. And they all want to come here to the beach, young people. So we targeted into the cities uh, campaigns and uh, that uh, there was a lot of money coming out from there. So we were very happy about that because we need it. Uh, when the employees come all back to work, we notice that they have strictly followed the rules. Uh, it seems to be they've forgotten everything that we uh, learned them in the last uh, two years, three years. So focus on the thing and, um, and adjust all the things that annoys you already for a few years, because uh, that's easy to, uh, to, learn, to learn it right. Um, ask your employees to be at maximum flexibility and we and uh, the fixing working hours and days are really a thing from the past because you're a different hotel and you have to change the environment change and also the hotel has to change. Um, now the, then for the reopening, uh, the, the, what's very important is to create a safe hotel for your guests and your employee. Uh, the R IVM, that is the National Institute for Public Health and Environment in the Netherlands. They set the rules. Uh, so how do we deal with the new rules in practice? Now, that was very difficult. We had a lot of uh, brainstorm session about it with all the, with the management teams. Um, uh, we become, what we did is we divided uh, the building in uh, disinfection, disinfection zones. So when you go to the hotel, you come uh, by a disinfection zone. When you go to the restaurant, you come in disinfection zones. So uh, we, we use signing to indicate the zone and walking routes. Uh, also we use social to show all the measures that we have taken to uh, inform our clients uh, for, for, the, for leisure and uh, business also. Uh, and I, because hygienics is very important that you create a safe uh, environment for your guests. Um, create e-learnings for your employees and make them responsible to the guests uh, and for each other. Uh, we appointed a COVID safety uh, officer uh, every day uh, to ensure that employees and guests uh, complete, comply by the rules. Uh, you can also make a pre-arrival mail, which you mentioned all the measures taken, so that you uh, create a, that you can tell them that you have a, a safe place to go, uh, and make sure that you have enough infection gel. Write it down, please. Uh, plastic hand gloves, mouth caps, uh, because it's really hard to get that kind of thing, uh, and it's when you are and you buy them early uh, because. 
uh, later on it gets very expensive or they cannot deliver. Um, but the regulations get eased uh, the last month and um, uh, so it's going to be, it's, 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 it's better at the moment, but it's, it's really fragile. You don't know what's happening or uh, when there's an outbreak or not. But uh, so you have to focus uh, really on sales, sales and sales. You have to be the, the, the best, safest hotel in England, you know, in every country you have, in every country you are. But uh, um, what we see is that the spend in the restaurants is, will, is not so high uh, because people are, are going out and they're going to eat in restaurants outside of your hotel. Normally, we, we have uh, in a weekend day 900 uh, uh, people in our restaurant uh, uh, over the whole day. And now it's around 300. Um, our hotel is located near the beach. So uh, the weather is uh, at the moment is uh, very nice. Last week, it was very good. So last week, we were fully booked. And uh, we had uh, a co occupancy from uh, 90%. So that's, there is hope. There's still hope. Uh, for July, we had uh, a lot of actions uh, uh, online. And we already have for the coming four weeks, we have uh, uh, occupation for uh, uh, that's around uh, 85%. So, um, but we have worked very hard uh, in preparation when uh, the, uh, how do you call it, when the, uh, the, the rules were eased, uh, and then we can uh, uh, do a lot of sales. Right. So uh, be positive. That's the only thing that works. And um, yeah. Thank you. That's really amazing. Okay. I, I, and that's the reason why uh, when we had the chat a few weeks ago and you explained that your hotel actually you managed to get occupancy really high. I was so excited. I said, I, I think it's really important uh, we speak out about this and, uh, and that's great. Um, there is a question for you, Ab, actually. A question from Philippe. So thank you very much, Philippe. Um, did you experience good collaboration with your colleagues um, in the industry or did you feel that everybody was trying to invent a recovery plan of their own? Ab, uh, what do you think? No, 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 we corroborate uh, very much because we all had the same problems. So I know a lot of hotel owners in the region and uh, we send each other apps and how did we do it? How we make our signing, uh, small movies. So we all helped each other mm -hmm. because it's uh, very important that, uh, yeah, that everybody is ready again <laughs> because they all have the same problem. Yeah, no money. wonderful, I, yes. <laughs> Oh, that's good to hear. That's good. Thanks for sharing your feedback. And I'm sure we'll get more questions for you. Um, for you. Yeah. So I'm thinking now, um, I know that we have a few people attending from um, UK. So England, the hotels are going to reopen on the 4th of July. Um, we have uh, uh, Scotland following. I would like actually from Victoria, um, I know that you're looking after so many hoteliers around the world. Do you have any other stories that you heard similar to Ab, who is based in Netherlands, of hotels reopening and um, almost using hygiene as a as a, a tool uh, to get a client back, really? Yes, sure. So I've spoken to many customers who attended the webinars. Uh, and I've been traveling during the last couple of weeks in mainly in Germany and Austria. And I really need to say many hotels are doing a very, very good job. So what, what they focus on in terms of hygiene, they focus on social distancing, especially uh, where, where it's close, for example, uh, during the breakfast, uh, or they do not offer buffets, or they serve the food to the table, but the tables are really uh, far apart, so that you, that you have this social distancing. But this is not possible. You have to wear a mask, which is okay for me uh, because it gives you the feeling and it's, we know it's more safe, but it's also a sign that you can feel more safe. And the people reception, they have these barriers made of glass or acrylic glass for extra kind of safety. In addition, I've seen many hand disinfectants at the entrance. So 
all the different uh, hotels that were offering really these hand disinfectants and asking the uh, customers to really disinfect their hands to be safe. And what I've also seen a lot that really uh, they were focusing on increased cleaning and disinfectant frequencies, especially with the high touch surfaces. And honestly, me as a guest, that made me feel more comfortable. And I think that's important at the moment. You need to make your, your customers to feel comfortable and to feel safe. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. And you mentioned about Germany. Um, have you seen anything specific, for example, in South of Europe? Any, um, any stories of maybe hoteliers who've gone... Uh, You've noticed some uh, uh, marketing campaign or whatever that struck you? Um, what I found especially interesting is really uh, hotels I've stayed during my last couple of years and I received some newsletters from them saying what they do. And that honestly, for me as a, a hygiene partner, but also as a, a consumer or guest, that made me feel more comfortable because they were writing what they're doing and why I can feel safe uh, personally, and seeing this order from a hygienic perspective, with my knowledge, it's really some some great thing you can do. And I received it from across the globe, especially from Europe. So that's really a recommendation uh, to the hotels that I would give. Yeah. Okay. And um, what I found, how do you feel? And it's a question actually for everybody. But we've seen. Um, Marketing messaging, and sometimes I wonder, okay, that's great, that looks good, but what's behind? And actually, I'm going to ask you straight the question, Nina. <laughs> what would be your recommendation in order for the hotels not just to, to have lovely marketing materials, but actually need to make sure there are some processes behind it, yeah? We just don't want just the marketing nice brochures what what should we what should the hoteliers actually do as well thank you benedict so um i have some tips i'll move the screen <laughs> for reopening four key stages i think are uh, thinking about who will be returning so who are your vulnerable workers can they return do they still do they need to still be furloughed or can they work from home and managing expectations, managing your, your expectations of, of the customers that you're going to have, the, the staff that are going to come in. What are their expectations? What will the new normal look like to them? So that's the first stage. The second stage is, is preparing, and, and that's the risk assessment stage. So that's the, um, the, the, the risk assessment for the exposure of COVID-19. And, you know, we were just talking about hygiene and to me it's about infection control because this is a public health outbreak and it's it is hygiene but a lot of people think about hygiene and food hygiene and it and it's more than that it's about how we can actually stop this infection from spreading through through the community but through your business so the risk assessments need to be um, specific to to your business, and they need to you need to map your business and map the different sections to to actually identify where the hand high contact areas might be and and the workers that might be involved in it. Um, the risk assessments also need to think about um, other aspects such as Legionella. If your business is being closed down for some time, it's not just about flushing; it's actually about recommissioning the building. Um, and recommissioning the plumbing system. So having a, your water treatment company coming in and actually working with you on that. Obviously, there's fire safety. There's uh, fire safety from a, from a disabled point of view. So if persons that have got mobility issues, how are you going to manage that in terms of social distancing? What is your procedure for that? Um, obviously, making sure your statutory inspections are, are up to date. And terrorism hasn't gone away. Um, so you do need to think about security because a lot of a lot of businesses would be keeping doors open to keep a flow of air going through the building. That's obviously a security risk, whether it's just a, a passing opportunity theft or whether it's actually a terrorist attack. So you need to keep that in mind. And then food safety, your HACCP program still needs to be kept up to date. You may have changed suppliers. So you need to think about that. Your, your menus will have changed. So how have you updated your HACCP plan for that? So the risk assessments and preparation of it are 
extensive. Um, and it, it's, as I said, it's not just about COVID, it's about many other aspects as well. And you do need to involve your workers with your risk assessments because they know what's going on and they need to buy, have the buy-in to actually help you, help you with that. Um, ex executing um, the return to work. So, you know, as I said, infection control, making sure uh, Ab mentioned having a COVID um, a hygiene kind of officer. So making sure that you've got somebody that's in charge of that on a daily basis. And that could include um, uh, temp temperatures for food safety. It could include um, Legionella, um, temperature controls. Um, so just hi the, the COVID hygiene officer just, just have to look at the, the high contact areas and, 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 and social distancing. They can actually help with other aspects of hygiene. Um, social distancing, as we know, is it, different in different countries. Um, in England, they're reducing it potentially if you can't keep to two metres to one metre, but that has to be with mitigation measures. So you can't just go to one metre without actually thinking about whether you've got increased cleaning, um, shortening activity of work time with people, back-to-back -back working, partitioning. So all these types of things are part of your mitigation measures, which then potentially give you the the opportunity to work within a one meter distance but if you can't do it then you then then you won't be able to continue with that operation um the the other side of it is uh sharing your risk assessment and retraining as ab said um everybody forgot everything um so from the basics of the kind of fire life safety all the way through to the new protocols with covid to, through to customer uh, engagement your staff will need to be retrained. Um, and then you will also need to think about maintaining visitor lists in case of, uh, um, and, and also actions in case of illness and, and potential quarantine of, the, of, the, of an area or, or quarantine of a, of a guest. Um, maintaining visitor lists in a, in a hotel is not really a problem because you've got, if they're guests, you've got them registered. Um, but in a, in a pub, which is, potentially opening this weekend in, in England, um, then the pubs are, are going to have to be able to somehow maintain a visitor list, which is, is very difficult. And then obviously you need to monitor the situation. And as Ab said, he, he followed the local government advice. Um, and I looked on the local government advice here for England and Scotland before the webinar. And already there had been changes and updated uh, updates to guidances. So it's a changing situation. So your risk assessment has to be reviewed on a weekly basis. And you need to have a contingency plan for potential um, closure. So it, it, Leicester, city in in england has had to go back into second lockdown because of a, an outbreak of, of of covid so you have to think about what if we have to close a city or something else to do it so you need to think about how you manage um, safely thank you no, well, that's great. And um, Nina, I know that uh, you've been uh, monitoring the different countries. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, for a group who may have hotels all around the world, what what have you seen? Is it mainly they create their own uh, protocol and try to apply them in all the countries? Or, or, or what have you seen? What, what's the trend? There's um, a lot of hotels with um, hygiene and, and cleanliness programs. So that might be, um, so the American hotels, they might follow the American Hospitality Lodging Association um, cleaning standards, so stay safe. Um, it might be that there's um, th this companies out that they go and do a, an audit. So they, they review all the auditing protocols and um, so, the, so the COVID policy, risk assessments, um, your actual area and they give you a stamp to say that you're kind of covid protected um mm -hmm. so, so there's different different aspects of it um it, it's very it's very difficult for for organizations where they they're operating over multi um or multi districts nationalities because it, it's not all the same you know even just looking at england and scotland the guidance the way it's written in england is completely different to the way it's written in scotland it's it's not easy and and for you ab i mean uh, do you feel that hygiene and um, and 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 safety and and retraining your staff 
compared to before, how much more time do you actually spend on that? A lot. <laughs> because, um, yeah, that's, that's the main thing. People have to be feel safe because the first time they are very in shock about the whole uh, COVID. And, um, and also the guest has to feel safe. So you have to, yeah, re, uh, do more than uh, expected. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. So everywhere we have stickers and, uh, and, uh, and we also uh, wear buttons with their, their stands on. Uh, we take uh, 1.5 meters uh, distance. Uh, so we might, so they also have to uh, remind the guests and themselves to take all the uh, safety safety precautions. Mm -hmm. I heard in um, in a university in the Netherlands that the students wear a sensor or something, and when they are too yeah. close to each other, it rings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> are, there are a lot of new inventions, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, then maybe the whole day you hear beeps, so yeah. uh, it's not so uh, guest friendly. Yeah, no, uh, but it's about safety. And uh, yeah, Victoria, safety. yeah, is there anything else you would like to add as a recommendation to the hotels? Yes, for sure. Um, so in general, and we heard it a little bit from Nina already, it's really important to follow the recommendation of the public health authorities because they may differ per country, but they may even differ by region or district. So that's really important. And they usually know what is really the latest status. Um, then we heard it a lot, education and training. We need now to reinforce trainings. Uh, the staff needs to understand how to clean properly. They need to understand which product to use, what time is the contact time, what about the dosage. So that's really important. And uh, we need also to reinforce the personal hygiene means hand washing, hand disinfectant. I mean, both is really working, but really need to do it. And if you need to sneeze or to cough, how do you do it properly without really uh, yeah, putting anyone into danger? And also we heard it before, have enough hygiene scale available. <laughs> That's really important, provide hygiene materials. And it can be soap, it can be really disinfectants, but there need to be enough uh, really in store. Uh, also, clean all the high touch objects uh, and surfaces. Really focus on them. Clean them properly. Use approved disinfectants. Also important. Not every disinfecting is effective against uh, coronavirus. So really have a look at the disinfectants. And as already mentioned before, consider really closing non-essential public gatherings. Do we really need to open the bar? Do we? You, do you need to open the fit, open the fitness center right now? So that's some general uh, ideas. The same for the buffets. Can you properly switch to uh, just serve the food on the table? Is it possible in your operations? And what was also said, really make your guests feel comfortable. And I've heard some nice idea with the stickers. So you can also say, uh, put some stickers somewhere saying that you comply with the new hygiene rules, send out newsletters, uh, place really disinfectants at a prominent place that people are seeing it. Uh, and or even send your staff out to the lobby to clean the high touch surfaces more frequently so that really people see that you're focusing on the new hygiene rules. So that's from my perspective is very important. So, I mean, listening to Nina and you, Victoria, and Ab at the beginning explaining everything that he needs to do, I, I just wonder, um, can technology help us here? Because I just wonder how you can keep. So you're saying, Victoria, for example, you need to remember to go and send your staff to go and clean um, the surfaces uh, probably at a specific time because you need to respect a specific time frame between two of the tasks. And it must be absolutely a huge uh, uh, program to, to be able to manage all of that. So. I decided to invite Alex, who is the technology uh, guru here. And uh, Alex, can technology help to deliver all this protocol? Uh, yes and no. Um, 
first of all, when you look at social distancing um, and uh, you know the golden circle of uh, who you are, what you do and how you do it, um, you know who you are, then the next step is what are you going to do? Okay, so that's a lot of hotels have spent a lot of time defining what to do. And then the next step is how can you do it? And then you see that a lot of hotels still go back to the paper stuff, right? And um, paper is something you touch. So um, we also see now hotels switching to um, more the, the digital world. And I think that's a good thing um, because um, based on digital technologies, you, um, you can train uh, your old staff, but also your new staff um how to do the things and when to do it um and when you look at the things how to do it um you need to know um as a as a leader of your hotel um what the operational excellence is of um your own staff and looking at um and listening to up his hotel is doing really good um, we also hear a lot of hotels that have very low occupancy rates. And that means that they're not working with all the personnel, um, the old personnel, um, and working with less personnel. So then the question is, how do you train them? We already spoke about that. But then the, the next thing is, when you train somebody, how do you know they're going to do the right thing at the right time? So here, the checklists and checklists and checklists are in order. Um, and how do you arrange them? There are several companies that offer digital checklists. Um, so every employee, every employee can work with its own checklist. And then as a hotel leader, you can see real time on this program, whether they did the task and if they do it right. And you can see when they finish the tasks, and then in a digital way, you can hand over the task to a supervisor. Um, so when the cleaner is gone, then the supervisor can check. Um, these kind of technologies, looking at housekeeping, for example, um, they, they are entering the hotels, right? They're, they are more and more common, but you also see that smaller hotels still work with, a, with an old fashioned way. And the question is, um, from a cost perspective, do they, and do they want to spend money on digital or say it will cost us? Um, what, what we see um, in practice is that some hotels, they, they say, hey, let's create a digital environment and create a kind of digital manager um, that will cost us maybe 100, 200, 300 euros um, per month. But therefore, we don't have to hire um, a new supervisor or a new manager. And they can control, uh, and you can control as a hotel leader, your daily status and manage it. I think that is one that's really important um, to look at because um, at the end, although you have guests in your hotel, then how will the guest reviews be? Because looking at the at the who you are, um, and you you wish to become um, a, a nice hotel, warm and at home feeling. Um, with social distancing, this is very hard to realize. So um, now the hotels have little money, so they focus on the PL, the profit and loss. So that means more efficient, less people, um, but great uh, 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 guest experience. And that's that's a difficult combination to realize. So how do you get your high standards, your high quality with new and old staff, um, how do you manage them? Um, and at the end, um, yeah, how, how can you get your uh, employees more independent? You can teach them one time, uh, but most of the time they need to learn in practice. So get your techniques in there. There are several suppliers that manage this. Um, another nice example is, for example, in Spain, um, I see that hotels that have restaurants, they have a kind of uh, application where they um, created their menu so the, the guests can look at the menu and, um, and then 
uh, ask the waiter to come over to the table and order directly. So how does this work? They scan with a QR code, um, a kind of sign on the table, then the uh, application shows um, in their mobile and they together they discuss what to eat. These kind of examples are really interesting for, um, for hotels with restaurants. And at the same time, talking about restaurants, various hotels signed contracts with suppliers which um, charge commission based on each reservation. And what you see is that guests that are in the hotel also need to make reservations within the restaurant based on social distancing, etc. Um, and they get charged for it. So look at also the, the charges you get from your tech suppliers, um, because there, there are a lot of them, uh, and choose the right one to help you forward. And uh, these times we are here to help. So um, ask your suppliers too, to, uh, to be a bit um, beneficial for you. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a great point, Alex. And I was going to add, um, I mean, I, I don't wish this on anybody, but if tomorrow uh, there is a break of a, um, a virus in a hotel, I guess if you have all your records and you can prove that your hotel has put measure in place and you can see what has been done by a member of staff at the time it was done at the exact time and the date uh, that's very powerful and for me this is what i meant at the beginning when we talked about marketing material great to see that the hotels are doing really their best but i just want to um i think it's more powerful if we know that at the back they have invested in technology or they have invested in their relationship with their uh, suppliers uh, to do things right so it's not just a marketing message so yeah and to to, to addition in addition to that um it's not uh, managing a hotel in real time right it's it's based on how can you learn of the past from the past um, how can you do it right now and how can you learn from the past because you registered everything uh, so how, what employee did uh, what at what which time etc um, learn from that and optimize daily so based on um, based on learnings, when you work on paper, just, okay, but get your paper and analyze it. Um, it will be much more easy to do it in a digital way with the data that you have, but you need to register everything you do within the hotel. From an operational experience, um, I know it's possible to create your workflow, manage everything um, on a daily basis, um, on a, on a real-time basis, actually, where you know the status of everything that happens within your hotel. There are platforms mm -hmm. and there's technology that, that serves, and it's not really expensive. Just look at it closely, analyze it <laughs> before you work with it, and start with it. And use it as throwaway software, okay? Use it for three months and see if it works. If it doesn't work, throw it away, okay? And start something new. But it's there in the market. It's There were a lot of developments over the last months uh, just to create task lists for your cleaning per room, um, the task list for the front office, and they can do it with their own mobile. So they don't have to touch other screens or other papers. So I'm. Uh, let's stay on the technology for a bit, and then uh, we're going to come back to you, Victoria, because we've got a question for you. Um, but on the technology bit, uh, as you said, Alex, there's lots out there, which is great. I mean, the technology world has really jumped and they're trying to fix the pains and help the hospitality, which is great to see. But what would be your recommendation, maybe from you, Ab, what would be your recommendation as a hotelier who doesn't have much technology because it has been okay to run a business without it up to now, but the situation has changed. What would be your recommendation for, for them to, to start their journey on technology and, and how to approach the market? Um, now, I think the hospitality is a little bit old fashioned about uh, to, to put everything digital. Um, but it's uh, when you have your, for an example, all your, everybody has checklists because you cannot remember more than 20 things and you need to do 40 things. Uh, you, you work with part timers or uh, people that work uh, less hours a week. 
so they all have to remember what they have to do. Um, there's also also some tension now uh, because we need to have quality and also we have extra protocols for COVID and all uh, for hygiene and every uh, all kind of things. Um, but we also have to watch our hours you know, because um, yeah, quality and uh, less hours and pro we have to make profit. That that's the that's yeah, that's water and fire. So uh, we have to, um, yeah, that's also, that also, that always gives tension, but we need to digi digitize everything because it's much easier mm -hmm. for us. Okay. And I think the, the hospitality is behind. So. You have not exactly answered my question on what would be your recommendation. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. Sorry. <laughs> for the hotelier in front of so much technology, how should they choose? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, what, 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 I don't well, really understand the question. So, uh, yeah, um, if hotel decide, okay, I'm going to um, uh, invest in technology, for example, to help me to run my checklist. Yeah. What would be your recommendation? How should they start if they've never used anything before? <laughs> Uh, start with every, uh, uh, not everything at the same time. Start module by module by module, and mm -hmm. um, and then uh, it will be good. Okay, because so you bit, by it, you, you, bit by bit, bit by bit, do it right and not half, because uh, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. Maybe, okay. maybe to, in addition, um, Benedict, what we what we notice in practice is that now various hotels are looking at various individual applications so they work with five yeah. seven or nine application at the same at the same time so they lose overview and m my suggestion would be when you invest in something invest in something that suits your needs now but also look at how can you get that overview because when the front office works with another different app than the technology uh, department and the housekeeping you, you already have three different apps and there are a lot available because, for example, Victoria, I believe that she spoke about um, HACCP, for example, it's a different app. And at the same time, as a hotel leader, you wish to have a real-time overview because that's the only way you can manage it with less people. So my suggestion would be look at the apps that you really need, look at the suppliers that offer a broader platform, not only one module, to invest in the future so your data won't get lost. Um, and when it's crappy, throw it away. And right away, and then choose a new one. And that's how we improve. Very good. So um, one point we wanted to discuss, because we are very lucky we have three suppliers today on the panel. And um, what would be your recommendation for hoteliers to make really the best of, um, of their partnership with their suppliers? And we have a question from Denise. Um, actually, it's for you, Victoria. Oh. Oh, she must be a fan of Ecolab. Uh, can you mention about the Ecolab Science <laughs> Certified Program and how many hotels and restaurants have Ecolab certification on the world right now? Yes, sure. So for those who have never heard about it, the Ecolab Science Certified Program is now a second step after we did all these webinars and supported checklists and uh, other materials. We now kick this off and it basically combines this know-how and it's not just know-how from a global perspective, it's really local know-how uh, with the right procedures. And we are helping our customers to stick to a really certified defined, to these uh, defined processes. And if you really stick to them, and if you really uh, stick to the protocols, you then get certified. So far, this has just been kicked off in North America. Um, and I know we have many, many requests globally, but I've not heard about the exact number of really certified customers so far. But really, the interest is really amazing. So looking forward to get more customers on board with this brilliant program. Lovely. And what is your recommendation for hoteliers to really take advantage of their relationship with Ecolab? What, what do you do? What do you offer them? So the first thing is really ask for support. Really ask what is your supplier offering you for uh, this pandemic? That's the most important. And uh, we as Ecolab, we've really offered many, many things for free. Uh, we've uh, held webinars. 
we've created cleaning procedures, checklists, protocols, uh, and I also want really to uh, give a recommendation to have a look at the Eagle of the Com page, where you can get really all this different information there uh, in many different languages across Europe. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And uh, Nina, what would be your recommendation for the hoteliers? Uh, we have, so England reopening next week. How should they approach this? Uh, I mean, it's probably getting too late now, but uh, wh what should they do? Well, it's getting too late, but I think, I think it's collaboration with uh, industry um, uh, professionals, uh, people that they, they know. I think the UK hospitality industry has done a fantastic job in terms of um, working with the guidance that's been issued. Uh, the UK um, Housekeeping Association has just implemented a, a toolkit, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, there's so many um, businesses out there that are offering kind of free checklists and everything else. It gets a bit daunting, though. So I, I, I do think it's about reaching out and asking and, and saying, you know, can, can you direct me in the right place can you help what do you think uh, you know it, it should be about collaboration mm -hmm. wonderful so i'm just going to check we're approaching the end of our uh, session i'm just going to double check the last question and there's one for you ab um here in the us so this is a question i'm sorry i can't see who it is from but thank you whoever asked it here in the us and I'm sure around the world, there are people who do not believe uh, that they are vulnerable to the virus. How do you enforce the rules in your hotels so that everybody is compliant? Uh, that's why we have a uh, uh, Corona officer and that looks uh, around all for our staff and also for our guests. Uh, last week, we had one man in a room and he was coughing the whole time. So we we uh, we asked to go home, ask yeah. him to go home. So yeah, you have to you have to uh, uh, take care of the safety for our employees and our other guests. So uh, the guests are also uh, telling if some somebody because we heard the, the complaint from the room next to it. So everybody is watching uh, uh, each other. That's the thing. Okay. So uh, there's no way out. COVID is there. Yeah. <laughs> and, the new, and the new rules also. So, um, so as I say, we're approaching the end. Um, the question we had of, uh, of, uh, for today was, uh, will hygiene help to get our guests back in our hotel? So can I ask all of you uh, to answer the question if it's a yes and a no, and, um, and a final recommendation for our hoteliers who are listening to us? And, and Ab, I'm going to ask you to be the last one to answer this one. <laughs> so maybe Nina, do you want to start? Uh, yes, absolutely. Hygiene um, is very important. Um, but it's also, as I said, it's about infection. It's about infection control. So it's, it's think thinking, where is my route of exposure and how am I going to, to, to keep it managed? Um, so, so I, I Yes is the answer. <laughs> Lovely. That's, that's great. And what about you, Victoria? Is this a yes or a no? And the that's final a, recommendation. That's a clear yes. And uh, I've already seen it in a couple of hotels across uh, Europe that it's bringing best the guests. Uh, stick to the hygiene and make really, as I said before, your guests feel comfortable by demonstrating that you're focusing on hygiene and then the case will come back. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And for you, Alex? Um, yes and no. Um, it really depends how you manage your business. I, I believe that managing your expectations in advance, um, managing expectations while they are in their hotel, and then please, when, they're very ha when your guests are very happy, um, ask them to promote your hotel that it's safe and it's um, it's well managed and um i think that's that's the most important change um the the public opinion um that is safe to travel and um yeah for the hotels please be amongst them that are the good hotels uh, that manage hygiene well thank you and ab 
final words yes, yes, <laughs> from you. Uh, r- r- yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the environment when they where uh, they are working in and, and our guests is very important because if you don't get your things right, then no, uh, the guests will tell on social, and so uh, you have to overwhelm them with high hygiene um, because th- then they feel safe. That that's that's the main thing. To be I, I, I already told you you have to be the safest hotel in England or, and tell everybody what you've done. Uh, to 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 create an uh, an environment that's very safe. Wonderful. Thank you, Ab. Well, I want to thank um, WHTT for hosting uh, this panel. I would like to thank all our panelists uh, for coming to discuss about this, uh, especially you, you, Ab, for sharing your experience and uh, your positivity but realistic <laughs> uh, positivity about the future. And um, yeah, thank you very much to everybody who joined us and asked the question and uh, reach out please to all our panelists if you need any support to reopen your hotel and um, grow the business. So thank you and uh, we'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>